Sharks are full of surprises. For example, this bright orange nurse shark which was found off the coast of Costa Rica in 2024 and has been in the news recently because of a science paper that came out about it. But the burning question is, of course, why is it orange? And how has it managed to survive if it looks like a school bus parked in a snowstorm? I'm John Riven and I've spent 30 years making films about the sea, including working on both series of the BBC's Blue Planet. And although nurse sharks are a big species, there are still bigger sharks that would eat it, or even killer whales, orcas, which are known to take big sharks. Watch this video of an orca taking down a great white shark. Scientists believe it's the first time a... I suppose the first thing you might think of nowadays is that it's AI, because it would be possible, of course, to make an orange AI shark like this. But it is real, and it'd be very difficult to create this level of detail. There are also many experts and sources for it. And there's that paper about it in a respected journal published in August 2025. So, apart from being bright orange, it's actually a pretty normal Atlantic nurse shark, identified by its rounded, shovel-like, flattish head, smooth skin, and two rounded rather than sharply pointed dorsal fins. That's a characteristic of slower moving sharks. If you compare it, for instance, with a lemon shark about the same size, but it has very pointed dorsal fins and they're set further forward. And that's because lemon sharks are a faster fish catching species than the nurse sharks, although both live in coastal waters. In fact, there are three species of nurse sharks that are known. This one, the Atlantic nurse shark, which is also found in the Caribbean, the tawny nurse shark, which is found in the Indo-Pacific, the Red Sea and Australia, and the much rarer short-tailed nurse shark, which is only found in the Western Indian Ocean and is the smallest and, and hardly known at all. They're all mainly bottom dwellers and one of the things that gives that away is the little barbels around their mouth which are feeling through the sediment on the seabed. They're looking for clams and crabs which they easily crunch through with their broad, short teeth. Not razor sharp, but they're designed to grip and grind, not tear. They'll also go for things like sea urchins, or even starfish perhaps, and some of the flatfish, some of the rays that live just below the sand, and they'll probably more easily ambush those at night. Quite unkindly, I think, they've been called the laziest sharks in the sea. But that's because they loll around on the seabed during the day and they're much more active at night. Even so, I've seen them move pretty fast at times when they want to. And I've also heard tales of divers getting bitten by them when they've disturbed them too much. So as I say, this orange specimen was found off the coast of Costa Rica at about 120 feet or 37 metres down. So it was on the bottom. And that might be one clue as to why the orange doesn't matter. Because, as you probably know, red or orange spectrum light gets filtered out first, and by the time it gets down to 100 feet, there's hardly any left. So even an orange shark will look greyish-blue and blend in somewhat with its background. If you want more detail on that, there's even another video here on Induna on why so many deep-sea fish are red. It was only when it's brought up to the surface on a line that the bright light in the sun reveals it has this fantastic orange colour. So, sorry, I've been teasing that out a bit as to why. The science paper and many of the other videos that have done this will tell you it's because of something called xanthism. And it's also got some albino traits, probably, this nurse shark too. But that doesn't, as usual, tell you the whole story, because what is xanthism? Where in the skin cells does it happen? What's gone wrong or changed with its pigment cells? What's also curious, as you probably know, is that sharks have this kind of armour. They've got these things called denticles, which interlock like chain mail. They're very closely fitting if you look at a really high magnification, like under the electron microscope. And the area that you're looking at now is about the size of a match head. These scales make the sharks more streamlined and also give them protection because they're made out of a kind of enamel, a bit like teeth. And that's what's puzzling, because enamel doesn't usually take up pigment. 
Another way of looking at the shark's skin is to use a light microscope which allows you to look at the layers underneath the surface. Here in this first slide, bounded by the green box, you can just see some cells which are starting to make a scale under the skin. And in this picture, a similar area is further developed into one of those special shark scales or denticles. It's about the size of a human hair. And in this slide, you can see a completed denticle that's pushed its way all the way through the skin to the outside. So from this sideways microscopy through the skin, you can actually see that the denticles, the scales, are not totally interlocked and that there is some skin on either side of them, peeping round the edges, as it were, and letting any colour that there might be in that skin through. Also, the scales themselves are semi-translucent, particularly in nurse sharks, they're quite flattened. So that's going to let any pigment shine through too. But where in the skin is the pigment made? In this cross-section, which is a light micrograph, you can see just below the skin cells, there's these little black blobs. And in sharks, those are called melanophores. And they produce a black, dark pigment, which, as you might have guessed, gives the sharks their usual dark coloration. The scientists who studied the orange shark weren't able to take a skin sample, but they suggested that it's basically an albino shark in which the melanophores are broken and they're not able to make the granules that make the cells and the whole skin dark. Albino sharks are pretty rare, just a handful turning up every decade. It's thought they don't survive very well. But in the nurse shark, there are occasionally white piebald nurse sharks, which have lost their pigment in some areas. The reason it's interesting is because for our shark to be orange, it needs to have a white background. In other words, what's found in the rare albino form, because otherwise a darker shading would just mix with the orange to make a dark muddy brown. The orange itself is made in other specialist cells called xanthophores in the surface of the skin, which is why the condition is called xanthism. And in this particular shark, for some reason they've gone into overdrive. There's either many more or there's a lot more carotene there. To be fair, it, it doesn't take much. A single carrot, after which carotene is named, has only four milligrams of carotene in it. Carotene originally comes from eating plants, and the nurse shark, of course, is a carnivore. But it'll get its carotene through the food chain, via crabs, which eat algae, and lobsters, other crustaceans, fish, and various seashells. The sea urchin in particular is a spectacular grazer of seaweeds and it's full of carotenes which you can see when their shells are broken open, which people do because, as you know, in many parts of the world they're seafood. Recently there's been a worldwide outbreak of a parasite that affects sea urchins. It's a microscopic organism called a ciliate and it kills them within a few days. It's a disease that was first seen in the Caribbean in 2022. So it's possible, I suppose, that our orange nurse shark has been feeding on a bounty of dead and dying sea urchins in the Caribbean. Also, if you've noticed, I've used quite a lot of tawny nurse shark footage in this, and they are perhaps naturally more brown, maybe with an underlying orange. They're mainly from the Indian Ocean, but there's a suggestion, perhaps, isn't there, that nurse sharks have a diet which is rich in carotene. But whatever the nuance is, the orange shark is orange because of being albino and because it has an excess of orange pigment in the xanthophores. But hang on, there's a lot of orange fish in nature. How come they're not said to have xanthism? The Garibaldi in the kelp forests of California or... Antheus in the Red Sea come to mind? The answer is, quite simply, that Garibaldi fish and Antheus are normally orange. It's not a mutation or some sort of deficit, as it is in the orange nurse shark. And that's why it's probably rarer than one in a million, and it's so special.